everybody. It's David and Nikki Nellis for Foodie and the Beast. We have such a terrific show for you today. First up, we have Chef Brian McBride from Blue Duck Tavern. It's the Masters of Food and Wine Festival, and he's going to tell us all about it. And Fiola has opened in D.C. That means Chef Fabio Trabocchi is in studio. That'll be fun. And we've also got Chef Kevin Villalobos from Cure, and the folks from Bravo are in pouring vermouth. Can't wait. Yum. So that's Foodie and the Beast. We'll be right back. Planet Wine. It's like having your own wine cellar right in the heart of Del Rey. More than 700 bottles of domestic and imported wines offer something for every occasion and budget. For fine wines and more, there's a whole planet. Planet Wine in Del Rey. Well, the I end. see many things over there. What did you bring what us to try today? What are you guys planning today? on doing for Yummy us? Yummy things. Yummy okay. things. Okay, yeah. like, for example? We have vermouth from Doolin, which is the only AOC-produced vermouth in France. Uh, okay. It's absolutely delicious. It's Can been, you, for those who don't know what it, AOC refers AOC to? AOC is the Appellation uh, d'Origine Controlli, which is the essentially uh, law-making body that determines what you can or cannot do uh, with products in France, and it kind of has a whole legal structure. Um, but it's not just wine. There's also cheese and food products. Uh, Blue Duck uh, chickens are AOC certified and mm -hmm. many cheeses. Like this is the whole framework <laughs> for... Um, Perfect segue there. Yeah. Keep going. McBride has a thumbs up on it. It's, it, it's the basic <laughs> framework for, that the whole European Union uses uh, primarily for wine but also for food products just essentially to certify that the product on the label is the same that's in the bottle. Okay, uh, so but cheese. you brought three of those? I brought three. Um, everyone is very familiar with sweet vermouth and dry vermouth, mm -hmm. which Doolin makes, but they also make a Blanco, uh, which is a sweet white vermouth. Um, it has some very nice floral, fruity components. Uh, it actually has kind of like a, a big league chew pink bubblegum flavor, which okay. is delicious. So you're going to mix up cocktails with nuts. Do you mix, are you sipping these on their own, or are you mixing up cocktails? They're Great in cocktails, but they're also fantastic on their own as aperitifs. And this okay. is kind of a, a new train of thought for the United States where James Bond kind of ruined cocktails or martinis for us and, right. and said, you know, don't put any vermouth in there and, and give me a vodka martini. Uh, so this is kind of uh, coming back and, and making real cocktails, but also just... They're great on their own. It's real vermouth, and it's so, drinks like a delicious wine. So what are we doing? Are we trying them on their own? We're going to try them uh, on the rocks with uh, some twists. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Well, while All you right. do that, we're going to move to our next segment. All right. Well, I want to ask Brian right off the bat, Brian McBride. And Brian Huston, are you on the phone? Brian? Hello. Hi. Hi. How Hi, are Brian. you? Hi, Brian. Welcome to the show, and thank you for an amazing meal at Publican a couple of weeks ago. Oh, it was my pleasure. Well, it was our pleasure. A little early for you there on Sunday morning in Chicago? No, I, I sound like this at 3 in the afternoon. No, we're good. <laughs> All right, well, Brian McBride, let's start off with you, because you started sure. this event last year. It was the first year, am I right? Right. I did this event last year, and then I'm doing it again this year, and obviously Brian Houston is going to come down from Publican and join us. I also have a chef from Abattoir, Joshua Hopkins from mm -hmm. Atlanta coming, and I have um, uh, Pierre Abadejo coming from um, coming from California to join us as well. Well, let's explain what the event is so people have an idea exactly what this event is. What we do, what we're going to do at the Park Hyatt Washington is, is is we bring together chefs that think the same, who support sustainable agriculture, you know, have a have a pretty happening restaurant in their in their native city. And um, we match them with winemakers from the United States. Uh, we're going to do wine dinner from Virginia. We have wine dinners from California. And we bring everybody together and just kind of have a good time. Right. You know? Well, so Brian H., the, yeah. from the Publican in Chicago. Yeah. We have two Bryans in studio. Tell us, for those who haven't had the opportunity to dine at the Publican like we have, can you um, tell people a little bit about it? Uh, sure. It's, um, excuse me, it's uh, it's basically an American beer hall. Mm -hmm. The giant uh, big beer selection. Sorry, my, my son is, is partying this morning. It's um, all right. We got him. We understand. Uh, I'll get him. Hang on one second. Aww. Hang on one second. Um, but it is a big beer hall, and, uh, you know, we have, you know, over 100 beers, 12 on tap, mm -hmm. uh, a great list. And, uh, and uh, the food is pretty simply prepared. Um, you know, a lot of pork driven. The, the main idea was uh, beer, pork, and oysters, and then we kind of expanded. Well, we had that. we had pork every. I mean, between the suckling pig and the pork, the spice. I was gonna say we had pork beer, rinds. pork, and oysters. I think you're, yeah. you know, we we met that. That was some meal. It was excellent. And so, how did you get roped into this event? 
Um, you know what? It, it, like I said, I did. You know, through Paul Kahn, our chef owner, he mm-hmm. uh, he tries to get out and about as much as he can, and and just kind of spread the love a little bit. I I have some friends in D.C., and the opportunity to come out there is is great for me and my family. So I'm going to take advantage if I can. Oh, well, that's great. Well, so while you're here. Are you planning on dining around town a little bit, or are you just going to, like, participate in this event and see what it's all about? You know what? We actually just, uh, this last Wednesday at our farmer's markets, the, uh, I think it was the food editor from the Washington Post. Joe Yonan? Book signing, yeah. Yeah, Joe Yonan. And he, he was talking about a couple places. I was asking him where I should go eat and what I should go do. And, but it seems like the event is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so mm-hmm. I'm going to be pretty uh you, you're not working that hard. You're only working on Thursday. <laughs> well, one place you got to eat yeah. is the Blue Duck Tavern. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, that's, I mean, that was kind of the idea. I can't stay close to home. It's a, it's a working vacation for me. Well, and you know, Brian McBride, you know, you really, Blue Duck, when Blue Duck launched several years ago, you were really the first one locally to put your sourcing on the menu. I mean, uh, now everybody's doing it. I mean, and it's great. You started a trend that, you know, is now the norm and that's fantastic. How is it with an event like this and with a hotel restaurant your size, how are you able to work with these smaller vendors and have enough product? We, we, we've built enough relationships over the, over the years and, and we primarily have to deal with a lot of co-ops now. Mm-hmm. We deal with a lot of co-ops like Pat Valley, which is about 35 farms, all Amish, and they can pretty much grow for us year round. We have Tuscora Organic as well. We have, you know, Mennonite Creamery and, and they're big enough to support us. And then what we have to do is we just have to change the menu a lot. And we have a chef's table where we can use a lot of different products from smaller farms. But even like the Fresh Link out of Virginia, they, they've gone big and have multiple farms so that they have a bigger supply for us well is the sourcing you know the local fresh sourcing thing creating kind of a resurgence of small farming yeah I think it is I think it is we're seeing we're seeing a lot of good product from a lot of small farms and mm-hmm. getting closer and closer we even actually have buy our rabbits from a gentleman who has a company called grass central in Potomac Maryland really I mean yeah. is there is there because now everybody's into it. Is there resource poaching? Do you find that uh, restaurants are trying to, you know, offer more for some product in order to essentially buy away a resource, or does that not happen? No, it actually works. It actually works out better with the more people that buy from farms. It actually supports them, and the actually they, they can get bigger, and actually it, it really helps the whole mission. For, for more and more people to use them, more and more people go to the farmer's market, more chefs to use this product, it helps them to grow. No, I, right. I, I just want to, I don't want to influence you, but we have rabbits all over our front <laughs> We do yard, have rabbits I, all over our yard. Just, now, I had no idea there was some money in them, so uh, it depends on the price, but we can use that. <laughs> okay. A buck a head? I don't know if you want these rabbits, um, although they are eating a lot of clover, which That's is right. a good thing, which is all over my grass. Brian, we have a couple minutes left. Let's make sure everybody gets the, the details on that and how to get tickets. Sure. The event is um, going to be on June 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Mm-hmm. And um, on the night of the 3rd, we have a dinner with um, Barbersville Vineyards, which is a local winery out of Virginia. And I'll be cooking a dinner for that. And it's limited to 30 people. We have about five or six slots left for that. Okay. On Friday night, um, Brian Houston will be cooking in Blue Duck Tavern in the main dining room. Oh, fun. And so um, availability for his uh, event are going to be t- for two seatings, one at 5.30 and one at 8.30. Now, so Brian... Sign me up for that. Brian and Publican, what are you doing, like, what are you hoping to make that night? Like, have you already planned your menu, or is this the last we, minute kind Yeah, of we talked about it a little bit. We're, we have a, you know, a lot of what we do at the Publican is uh, charcuterie driven, and so we're going to highlight uh, one of our terrines. Um, and I think going back to what you were saying before is probably accompany that with something that's that comes from the D.C. area, but mm-hmm. probably just a, a pork and foie gras terrine. Uh, and that I think sounds terrible. With, oh God! I know. <laughs> that just sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's, it's typical chef. Not only did we talk about, it, I already printed those menus. So. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. And if, starving. And if I can, you can get any other information you want on mastersoffoodandwine.com. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have great. a website that, that, that has all the information and the pricing. Excellent. All right. Brian from Publican out in Chicago, we want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you when you're here well, in two weeks. Well, my, my son and I thank you. Oh. <laughs> no, you got to understand, Wolfgang Puck was on this show about a year and a half ago, and his, and his, his little two-year-old running was around. running around screaming, I got no pants on. So, yeah. <laughs> trust me, this was mild. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thank you for joining and us. Brian McBride, thank you very much for having me. We will see 
see you at Masters of Food and Wine. At the Absolutely. Thanks for bringing Friday. those um, apple pies in. Yeah. They look They'll delicious. They'll disappear soon enough. Yeah, fine, Ms. Bride. I'm going to ask you to switch yeah. seats, we'll Switch seats with your compadre from the, the other Hyatt. Uh, Kevin uh, Villalobos is the executive chef at Cure down at the uh, Hyatt at, uh, I want to do the address right, 1001? 1001 1000H Street. 1000H On the corner Street. of 10th and H. A Excellent. big, big, big host. 890 rooms, is that right? 880 rooms. 880. I can right. take the other 10 and keep them. <laughs> Why not? Um, so let's do the 411 on you first. Where'd you come from? Well, um, aside from Texas. Well, we I grew up in Texas and uh, I worked at uh, several Hyatts there. And then I uh, moved to Denver and uh, opened a restaurant for the Hyatt there. Mm -hmm. And then I moved here to Washington, D.C. and went to uh, the Capitol Hill Hyatt. Okay. And then I uh, had the opportunity to open up uh, Cure at the Grand Hyatt in uh, Chinatown. So, uh, I took that opportunity. We uh, get to write our own menus. We don't have any corporate standards when it comes to the food. Um, we try to uh, make it a freestanding style restaurant. Uh, we Is that tough to, to do? Well, um, it was a little uh, challenging, but tough. I don't, I don't know if it's tough, but uh, it was a, a g great experience, and it still is, so mm -hmm. well, I enjoy I, it. I read up. I'm, I mean, uh, you know, I was interested in the name because, of course... One of my favorite rock bands, but <laughs> but beyond that, um, and you and I were talking about this before. You say that you use sort of colonial methods to cure your own. To, well, you're curing well, more than meat. You're curing wines. I mean, well, what what we had a thought of, like uh, everything is basically cured. I mean, you're you're curing wine in uh, oak barrels. You're uh, we're cur curing our salmon in salt. Uh, we're using butter fats. Um, so I mean. When it came to Cure, it was just one of the names that came up, and we tried to incorporate some of our menu items in that fashion. Mm -hmm. So that's really kind of where we got our name. And how do you do it? Do you, Is it all done in-house? Yeah, we do a lot in-house. Uh, we buy a lot, too, locally. Um, not as much as Brian, obviously, but uh, <laughs> we, we try to keep uh, what we can local. It's not a competition. <laughs> it's always a competition. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit about the menu and sort of the things. I mean, you brought in all this gorgeous food today, some of the things that people can find in there. Yeah, we've been open about three years, and we mm -hmm. started lunch about three months ago. So okay. we have 22 items on the menu for lunch. And you could pick any of those items to go on your plate. And we have three price points. Um, uh, you can get a choice of three, four, or five. Uh, price points are 12, 15, and 18. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're not that hungry, you can come in, you can get a three. If you're hungry, you can come in, you can get a five. And everything's made fresh. We're open Monday through Friday. So, what do you Thank have you. sort of on the horizon for what you're going to do? What's new coming? Well, we just started this lunch thing, so that's what we're focused on now. Um, we have 22 items on the menu. We have a, you know, we make a a fresh sandwich every day. We call it the daily slice. Uh, and what is the sandwich that you brought in that's this here? This is our chicken, apple, walnut salad sandwich. So it's beautiful. That's the standard. But like every day, just to keep the uh, cooks and everybody excited, we just, uh, they make a new sandwich every day, depending on what they have uh, locally, what we can source out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just cut a big slice off every time somebody orders it. We also make a daily grilled cheese every day. Like I guess Friday we had um, a croissant grilled cheese. We had a bagel grilled cheese the other day. Just, just any kind of cool breads we can get, locally cheeses. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's always fun. But uh, we're just going to focus on lunch right now. We've done good for dinner. Uh -huh. uh, lunch and so, we love. Can you tell us a little bit about dinner? I mean, what are some of the things that people can find there for dinner? Yeah, we have a few staples that we keep on there, like a Maryland blue crab pie we make that we can probably never get rid of because people just throw fit. Mm -hmm. um, All right, we have to take a quick break. This is David and Nikki Nellis with Foodie and the Beast. We are sipping on vermouth, and it is delicious. Uh, and there's going to be more fun when we get back. The phrase neighborhood restaurant means convenience, but not necessarily style or good taste. But in DC's West End, Circle Bistro, Noti Bianche, and Dish Plus drinks take neighborhood dining to new levels. Circle Bistro offers contemporary French-inspired cuisine. Dish has new twists on American classics. And Noti Bianche is the perfect Italian trattoria. The Kennedy Center is just steps away, so pre- and post-theater dining is enjoyable and convenient. Dish, Noti Bianche, and Circle Bistro. There's good taste in the neighborhood. Hi, everybody. We're back on Foodie and the Beast with David and Nikki Nellis. We are drinking great stuff from Bravo, and we've got great guests in the studio. I want to go back to David Kirk and Pamela Doherty uh, for a moment. I um, want to talk about this vermouth, because this is something I would never even consider sipping. I was going to talk about this Well, vermouth. I don't really care what you're trying to do. <laughs> Everyone can talk about it. It's delicious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's but, super delicious. It is. But is this something that 
a, a more educated person would order? No, most even educated people don't necessarily know about this. It's kind of on the, the geek scale as far as wine goes. Okay. Um, especially the Blanc. I think anyone out there knows that sweet and dry vermouth is in existence. Maybe they don't like it or maybe they don't understand what it is. I mean, but I use it in cooking. There you go. Um, right. What's the difference? The difference between sweet, dry, yeah. and the Blanc? Yeah. <laughs> well, basically the dry is a white wine that's fortified and ar aromatized, and then the sweet is a red wine that's fortified and aromatized. The Blanc is something that's unique to Doolin. Um, some other producers, uh, Martini and Rossi, are kind of starting to do take take their lead and, and do a, a different product. Like Martini and Rossi has like a, a rosé vermouth that, that's kind of slightly sweet. Uh, but Doolin did it originally. They just left a little bit of residual sugar in the fermenting wine. Mm -hmm. And they have a proprietary blend of herbs that they use to um, flavor the wine. And so I couldn't really tell you exactly what's in it, but it's um, alpine herbs. It's from the Savoie region of France, which is uh, central eastern France. But so is it made? Is it? I, I guess my question is, because I only think think of vermouth as an accent. Is it made to be sipped alone? Is that the point? Is that what they... It tastes delicious by itself, doesn't it? It does. No, it absolutely does, but I was just curious if it the makers, is that aperitif. the intention? It'd okay. be like an aperitif, okay. absolutely. And I think that this in particular, for this weather that we have, this, like I said, this is my absolute favorite, um, just with a little orange uh, twist, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's perfect. It's refreshing, it's crisp. It's also a great way to start out your meal. You sit down at a restaurant and you don't know what bottle of wine you want or, or where, if you're going to start with champagne. Just have a little uh, vermouth on the rocks while you're looking at the menu. It's perfect. Way to start well, let me ask you something because first of all, I had that shows how like I'm totally uninformed I am. No idea that vermouth was basically wine with you know <laughs> sex appeal, uh, more sex appeal. But the, you know, Martini and Rossi make Campari, and that's called a digestivo. It's for you know to help get your system all worked up. Does this essentially exactly. have the it's, same it's, function? It, it, it's an aperitif. It, it gets your juices flowing. It's high in acidity, so it gets your saliva going, mm -hmm. uh, which is part of uh, eating. Uh, maybe it's not the pretty part of it, but it definitely... Not when I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> definitely uh, aids your appetite. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it, I mean... Right now, just drinking this, like I'm ready for a, a nice meal. So, uh, well, and there's well, tons of food here. <laughs> we have tons of good food. Right, we even have apple absolutely. pie from uh, Brian McBride. So, and whoopie we pies, which I love. Yeah, whoopie pies. Now, too. I see you have a lot of other things over there. Can you tell us what else you guys are going to introduce today? Um, certainly, uh, we have the uh, Conchito. This is a wine from Portugal. The mm -hmm. grapes are grown in the Douro, which is the region that grapes are grown for the production of port. But this is a dry white wine. Mm. This, I think, represents the new Iberian Peninsula. I get this from a, a one-man Iberian Peninsula uh, sourcing and distributing machine. His name is Jonas Gustafson, and he uh, sources wines only from Portugal and Spain and essentially searches out bodegas in um, in Spain and Portugal and, and brings them to uh, northern Virginia and the D.C. area. Well, that's interesting. I mean, we do see more and more Spanish wines, but we do not see a lot of wines from Portugal. This wine's delicious. It's uh, The primary grape is Ribagato, but it also has Codega de Lorino, mm -hmm. uh, Codega, and uh, Vicino. So just off the wall <laughs> varietals you've never heard of. It's got a little bit of French oak aging, gives it kind of a little bit of muscle in the mid palate. Um, the soil of Douro is primarily granite, so you get this nice rocky minerality to it. Mm -hmm. It's a phenomenal, uh, again, a great in the summer, but it's good year round because it's just delicious. Um, we've got a, a rosé, which is available in uh, the butcher's block. Uh, this is uh, from Shane Wines. He's one of the associate winemakers at Costa Brown, uh, which produces um, high-scoring Pinot Noirs, and this is kind of his own little side project. And it's then, a beautiful color, that rosé. Yeah, it's awesome. It looks like spring. Yeah, nice, nice strawberry, raspberry guy. Uh -huh. And then we've got a, a Grenache from, uh, <clears throat> from Australia. Oh, fantastic. All right, well, while you get to pouring, we are going to what? I was just thinking, the only other Portuguese wine I ever heard of, we called it Matus in college, but it was Mateus, which was about a buck a bottle, <laughs> and it's what you bought when you wanted a girl to think you had class. Uh, boy, I'm really glad <laughs> I it. It tasted like kerosene. <laughs> well, they'll think you have class if you get the Conchito. Okay. okay. Well, I need Nikki. I've got class. Excellent. Thank Finally. God. Finally. <laughs> and we are going to take a quick break, um, and when we come back, we are going to talk about restaurant openings happening in and around the D.C. metro area. This is David and Nikki Nellis with Beauty and the Beast. We'll be right back. Planet Wine in Del Rey is more than just 700 great wines. There's also a stellar selection of craft beers picked by Greg Engard, one of Food and Wine's favorite beer experts and artisan charcuterie from Red Apron. For fine wines, beers, and more, there's a whole planet. Planet Wine in Del Rey. 
All right, we're back on Foodie and the Beast with David and Nikki Nellis, and if you've heard that phrase, jumping out of an airplane with an erector set and building a new plane on the way down, that's what we're doing because he was <laughs> held up in traffic most of the show, but uh, Fabio Trabocchi is here to say that he is one of America's best-known and most inventive, inventive oh Italian God. chefs. Uh, is to, <laughs> He's you blushing. Are. I can't believe you're blushing. Aww, that's Come so on. sweet. Carissimo. Anyway, so... More than blushing, I'm on fire. And, and now he's back. You know, he had Maestro out at Tyson's Corner a couple of years ago, went away to New York for a little bit, and is back with Fiola down in Penn Quarter. So, Chef, well, welcome. I guess the first question is, you know, you were in New York getting rave reviews. Why come back to D.C.? Why not? D.C. is on. Is D.C. So, home? I mean, is that how you feel about D.C.? I noticed your accent. Well, it sounds like you're from here. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> can you? Yeah. <laughs> you can go on and on and on and on. <laughs> Well, it, I met my wife here. Mm -hmm. My kids are born here. It's home to me. That's great. And so did you feel, because the space that Fiola has opened in was where you started here in D.C., right? At First BJ? job in the country. Uh, did 20, you feel like kismet when they offered the space you know, to you? I think life is really a full circle, but... You know, it, it was the first job in the country. I was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. I was... Uh, that was last year. I wasn't right. born yet. That was, uh, that was last Thank year, you. but a couple of months extra <laughs> after that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I met my wife there, and we've been together ever since, so that made mm -hmm. sense to me. So for your fans and uh, those that are completely devoted to your way of cooking, do you find some of them coming in and asking for things that you used to do? Because, I mean, as a chef, you evolve, mm -hmm. and you probably don't want to do things you were doing five years it's ago. It's like when rock stars go and they scream for their, you know, earlier hits. <laughs> and so how do you, how do you um, introduce the new things to your fans? Well, you know, the, the menu that I did for Fiola, which is always evolving, and, and that's what I always did in any restaurant. I mean, we start with one menu, we look at ingredients, we look what's best in that area, we listen to our customer, what they like best and what they don't like, and, and that's why the menu, like a maestro, change every day. Fiola does the same. Mm -hmm. I think, back to your question, that um, some of the guests that we had a maestro, they are still be able to find some of the dishes that they were kind of the trade of maestro signature items. Mm -hmm. Um, yet also that's good for them because they can find other things that we never made there um, and so it's interesting uh, a lot of them they're asking for a tasting menu we never say no uh, and, and we do a tasting menu because that's what they used to when they were a maestro to sit down and enjoy mm -hmm. a meal that you know would be a celebratory dinner and um, and, and that the characteristic of that that you have a tasting menu that you have more than one type of wine and so forth so we do that too uh, but they enjoy even more now because they're not tied up into the fact that I have to go in, but it has to be special, and you know. And, and now they say, okay, we'll come back now for you know for lunch, or we come back for the patio sitting, or we come back for the bar because or for ten desserts, or for you ten know, desserts. at twelve o'clock at night. Like, I know some people. I don't know. This is amazing to me. Ten desserts at the bar. I mean, who's doing that? Well, uh, they pretend they're devouring their enemies. Here in town. So, right? guys, yeah. I yes, hate to do I this. Got to jump in, chef. Please make sure everybody knows where Fiola is down in Penn Quarter. Fiola is on Indiana Avenue, and uh, it's 601 Pennsylvania Avenue. The entrance is on Indiana. Mm -hmm. It's the only nice That's thing. so confusing about that. <laughs> but it is on Indiana, Indiana Avenue. Indiana, 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 Indiana. <laughs> and there's outdoor dining as well, correct? Yes, yes. beautiful patio. Yes. Nice. All right, well, and Chef. So, chef, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Washington. Thanks thank for you. joining thank us. Thank you, everyone. Us. Guys, we got to rock and roll because we've got uh, about a minute and a half. I just want to quickly thank our sponsors, mm -hmm. uh, Georgetown Bagelry, Neighborhood Restaurant Group, uh, the folks at Founding Farmers and Farmers and Fishers, mm -hmm. a Dish, Note Bianchi and Circle Bistro, Charles Schwartz and Son, and our newest sponsor, the Bethesda Central Farm, Farm Farmers Market. Market. That's be, easy be, for be. you to I say. I can't even say it. Right. I know. Okay. Uh, we will be off next week for Memorial Day. We'll have a best of show, and then we'll see you live the following week at 11 right here on 1500 and 820 AM. Have a delicious week.